sit down, we'll get into it. Uh, kia ora tato. good morning everyone, and uh, welcome to this um, meeting of the Regional Council, the November meeting. Um, and may I ask uh, Councillor Hewitt to take us through the prayer, please. O oh God, our Creator, bless us as we gather today for this meeting. Guide our minds and hearts so that we will work for the good of our community and help all your people. Teach us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. We ask this grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. So, welcome to um, my understanding. Two members from Hawke's Bay today now, is that correct? It's yeah. uh, not official. Okay, right. And, um, and others? Good morning and welcome. And uh, any apologies? Now, Peter Bevan um, in August put in a, a leave of absence, so we don't need an apology from him. So we're clear on that. Any notices? For today, conflict of interest declarations. Just, just so we're clear, Councillor Dick, could you just repeat that you are no longer part of um, NGR? You have stepped down. Interim chair of the establishment group. Um, some time back, before the confirmation of the annual plan. Um, and uh, I have no uh, interest, the, the NGR group has formed a company, I have no interest in that, nor do I ha intend to have any interest in it, but I remain the chair of the Regional Transport Committee, Sure. so I'm interested in the matter. Thank you. Thank you. That clears that up. Everyone's happy. Uh, minutes then. Let's go to the minutes. Let's see if we can find the minutes. Where are we? Here we go. So I'll just quickly go through for um, mm. okay. accuracy. So we have page two, page three, page four, five, six, page seven, page eight, and page nine. Someone happy to move them as a true and correct record, please. Thank you, Councillor Scott, as mover. Seconder, we have, uh, thank you, Councillor Graham. Put that motion, all those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, no, carried. Matters arising, I have one on page two, which is the petition from Mr. Mr. Little. Um, as a result of that, we have uh, ceased spraying in the interim. Um, my understanding, Mr. Aidy's not here, is there will be um, further discussion in Wairau, but uh, at some stage we're going to have to make a decision in the very near future on the Ohuia scheme. Uh, it probably will need spraying this year. Uh, but other than that, um, we're still talking with them and, um, with, and also at a higher level with uh, Dock and Fish and Game. So that, that work is in progress, but I just thought I'd update you on that. We have, as a result of the petition, we have ceased spraying as of, uh, as of that time. But we're still working on how we're going to deal with the issue going forward. On the northern or southern side? Northern. So is he's it? on the northern as well. So yeah. there's Oh yeah. Yes. He's on the Oh yeah side. Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. Any other matters arising? Councillor Belford. This on page uh, eight at the very bottom, there's a reference to uh, Stuart Webster and a legal review. Uh, uh, is it correct that that is going to be provided at the December meeting of the council? Oh. All right. Yeah. Good morning, councillors. Um, yes, it is. That's um, referenced in the next item, which is a follow-up from pre previous council okay. meetings, that the paper will be coming to council in December. Thank you. No other matters arising. Thank you. Let's continue then. Uh, Follow-ups from previous council meetings, page three. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Just the one which has now um, <clears throat> been drawn to your attention in regards to the um, uh, legal review of the water user agreements for council on 17th of December. And um, as is standard, um, 
attached to the um, Lagoima requests that we've received. Um, I'll just take questions if there are any. Will Mr. Can Webster be presenting that? Or? Yes, he will. No questions. Someone happy to move then? Uh, thank you, Councillor Scott. Move that. Seconded. Um, thank you, Councillor Belford. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, no. One aye and no noes. I'll take that as a positive. Uh, carried. Thank you. Minor items not on the agenda. Are there any? Mr. Mohi. Pardon me? Sure. And Chief Executive has one. I'll find the page to write that down. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, organisational information days. All good. <clears throat> Quick meeting's a good meeting. It might be a bit early to say that, though. Okay, uh, item seven. Oh, did you have one? Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, That's no, what I, was, I just. So I, I was saying a quick meeting. <laughs> I, I didn't realize the uh, information act request was part of the follow-up from the previous meeting. So I do have a question about that, if I may. Yeah. We have passed it. Um, All right. Can you turn into a minor item? A minor no. item. Yeah. Information act requests. Very good. Okay, uh, fixing the common seal, page 13. Mr. Drury, any comment on that? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just um, commenting to the Chief Executive. It's the first time we've got only one leasehold land sale uh, uh, reported. Um, so there is a definite downturn, um, which is uh, which is good as far as workload is concerned. Questions? Moved and seconded. Are there no questions? Uh, no speakers? I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. <coughs> Contrary, no. Carried. Napier <coughs> Gisborne <coughs> Rail Investment, page 15. I'll hand it over to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Mr Chairman. This paper is seeking uh, Council approval for funding to prepare a business case to um, uh, consider the lease of the rail corridor between um, Napier, Gisborne, Napier and Gisborne um, as uh, offered in the letter that's uh, attached uh, to this paper from uh, Peter Reedy, the uh, Chief Executive of KiwiRail, and sent uh, last week. Um, I've, the paper briefly outlines um, the background to this uh, situation, but you're all familiar with it, having traversed uh, this issue during the draft annual plan and consulting on it, and also um, obviously then uh, making a decision as part of the annual plan to retain in principle provision for an investment uh, in this um, in this proposal and to uh, consider a, a revised proposal and a business case from, from NGR. Um, this such a proposal was all really contingent upon being able to um, access the line and while we had to wait a while for uh, general elections to be concluded, um, we now have a response from Kiwi Rao who um, have as outlined in the letter, have offered us the opportunity to uh, lease the line and we now need to undertake um, a business case to, um, for, so that you are able to satisfy yourselves uh, whether or not such an investment is feasible. The um, business case, um, it's proposed, um, uh, well would have to be completed by February um, so that you're able to make a decision and we're able to respond to Kiwi Rail by the 1st of March. And so this paper really outlines uh, the key um, inputs into such a business case and the costs that would be associated with that 
and um, uh, and recommends that that uh, be funded by out of the money that's or the provision that has been made um, for the investment. Um, I've set out really um, I, what I see as some of the um, uh, the key requirements for us to understand um, of a business case, and have also outlined the the personnel uh, who will be involved in in um, significant parts of that. The um, Napier Gisborne Rail Establishment Group uh, are integral uh, to to this. They have an extensive knowledge already of uh, of this proposal and um, and the costs that are likely to be um, associated with it. Um, they are also um, have sought, um, as you can see, um, $125,000 for an engineering design study that would much more closely refine the actual costs of repair uh, of the washouts. Um, and so at the moment that is scoped between three and a half and five million dollars and obviously uh, being able to um, uh, much more tightly clarify that um, will assist in, in the business case. The other key uh, personnel member who, who um, we're looking to engage is someone that um, uh, would be independent of, of NGR, although work alongside them, and who would provide some strategic advice directly to Council. Uh, and that's a guy by the name of Nick Cornwall, who we've had some initial discussions with. And uh, he has a background, he used to work for Napier Port, he has a background in, in logistics and transport, and his... Um, I guess his his uh, um, brief, if you like, from us is to really commercially road test the whole model and and particularly to look at the um, uh, assumptions underlying the revenue uh, projected revenue stream because you know for us that's um, going to be critical to the success or otherwise of a um, of a, a business operating on that line. So this is a uh, request for funding for 250000 up to $250,000 um, from this money that you've agreed uh, in the annual plan was to be uh, set aside. Um, and um, it's really, I guess, is um, the opportunity to um, uh, satisfy yourselves, or not, uh, that um, being the uh, less lessee of, of the rail corridor, or the head lessee, um, uh, will provide um, a satisfactory investment, but more particularly, um, I guess, will also um, open up the, some economic development opportunities uh, to the north northern part of the region and, and beyond to Gisborne as well. Mr Chairman, I'm happy to take questions. I have a couple, but uh, I'll go elsewhere first. Uh, Councillor Barker, Mi microphone, please. Could you just give me a bit more background on the uh, capability of Nick Cornwall? I, I'm just wanting to be reassured that, apart from working with the Port of Napier, that he's got the other sorts of skills necessary to do the job. Yes. Um, look, I don't have his CV in front of me, although I do have a copy, and I'm happy to, to send that uh, electronically to you. Uh, I think I may be about to get a copy of it. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, what, prior to his um, work as a business manager for the Port of Napier, he um, uh, was actually a managing director of a forestry asset management company, um, so has quite a significant background also in, in forestry. He has some, uh, uh, he, he's very well connected with the, uh, the people that um, in the northern part of the region and in Gisborne who um, own and um, a harvest forests up there, so uh, he's certainly um, got that advantage as well. Um, he's um, certainly in terms of, I guess, the supply chain knowledge, um, that's really where his expertise lies, but I'm happy for you to um, obviously have a read of this. Um, yeah. I'm he, he appears to understand it inside out. Oh, could, uh, one small comment I had from him, he, he was instrumental in the Whanganui component of rail logs into the Port of Nightmare. Even didn't, better. He set that up. Even better, that's it. Excuse me, Councillor Scott then, Councillor Graham. Question, so he may only allow one at a time, I'm not sure. My first question really relates to the engineering design, which will be done by the NGR, will that be peer reviewed? 
Yes, it, yes, it will. I mean, we we um, uh, we are well aware that we're under um, a significant time constraint in terms of getting response back to um, uh, Kiwi Rail by the first of March, and I understand that that date is non-negotiable because we have inquired about that. Um, but we would uh, like to ensure that as much of the business case as possible is peer reviewed prior to um, um, being presented to you all. Certainly the um, uh, anything associated with the costs, um, both the capital costs and, oper and ongoing operating costs, um, we would um, anticipate being peer reviewed. And is that allowed for in that? Yes. Um, thank you. I'll come back with a later question. Okay, right. let's, we'll, we'll work the room. Uh, Councillor Graham. Uh, firstly, just um, in defence of um, Councillor Scott, th this is such an important issue that I, I have a raft of questions that, if we, uh, with the liberty of the Chair, if we could have sort of an open, so that we're going to be thinking of things as we go along. It's Absolutely, so yeah. No, no, I think we need a fairly um, open discussion on this. So so, um, so I'll kick off just with a couple, um, and begin it with a statement, really, that... Um, Independence in this is going to be absolutely crucial um, because um, the way uh, Kiwi Rail um, have decided to lease this to us is um, it cuts out all the other options. So they're saying we will lease you the railway line um, as a railway line. And um, as most people here are aware, I was really keen that the community, represented by regional council and perhaps other interests as well, did get hold of this corridor so that we could make a decision on what we do with the corridor. That's not the case here. Um, so it's quite different. Um, so um, we are considering only a railway line in this. And um, that's really a bit unfair to the other people who wanted to think about other things. So independence in this is crucial. So I just, wanna just just on that though, can I, if I take you to the last sentence of that letter, and, and you know there's a lot of negotiating to happen subsequent to this. Yes, but one of the be, clauses the clauses aren't numbered. The council having full responsibility and liability for maintaining the line and all associated rail infrastructure. Yeah, but at the bottom it says um, they will need to resume its process to lease the line for alternative uses, meaning we're not the only one that's interested. I'll make that point. Yeah, but to us and our consideration today, it is a railway line. I, I, I feel that that's the case. So uh, independence is, um, um, uh, I do know Nick, I just wonder, um, is he uh, independent is, of this? Is he's not any part of the, of the uh, political machine that's trying to get the railway line, he's in, definitely independent? Uh, he's never met any of them up until last week. Okay. Yep. Um, the engineering, uh, so I, uh, there's lots of things, that, understanding the engineering and the cost, that $125,000, um, understanding that it is three million or three and a half million or four million is crucial, so I understand that cost. Um, I would like, uh, as Councillor Scott pointed out, that that is independent, not, not, I'm just not happy just with peer review. I want to make sure that, as councillors, we understand that is the cost to fix that piece. And I think the reason that that's been separately identified, councillors, that has to be done by specialists. So Absolutely. Um, almost by default, they will have to provide their independent expert advice to the business case yep. um, as part of that. Yep. Um, I, I have some other questions, but I'm quite interested to know what everyone else wants to just think. Well, there's a few here. We'll, we'll go to Councillor Pipe and... Yeah, I, I guess, just to quite follow, I just want, I want... Are you quite sure that we can come in and that $250,000 for the consultant fees? Yes, I am. We... Um, uh, one or two of those figures are probably, if you like, top estimates of, of the costs. So um, we will manage manage the whole uh, business case development within that. So I'd just like to foreshadow... Broader bucket. I just, on that statement, I'd just like to foreshadow an amendment to the uh, to the recommendation then, um, which will be to add the words up to 250000 because at the moment it approves expenditure of 250000 So I'd just like to foreshadow that. Just my second question is, there has been recent support by um, in the paper by the Gisborne Mayor uh, with regards to this. Is there... What is the relationship that we have with Gisborne? Has there been any sign of uh, financial support or political support um, 
other than what the mayor has said? Uh, I've talked to the mayor of Gisborne for many years over this, basically since it went out. He's been on a journey, I suppose is a fair way of putting it. He's, um, that's fairer than saying he's been all over the place on it, uh, but he has been. He's been everywhere. So um, he actually, and to his credit, um, and, and he's been positive all the way through, I'll, I'll say that quite plainly. To his credit though, he, he pushed the meeting of the mayors at Wairau recently, which um, was like an aligning of the minds uh, of the East Coast leaders. He's always been pretty reluctant to talk about any cash, um, but as I was quoted in the Wairau Star, and you'll all read that, no doubt, uh, yesterday, um, <laughs> was uh, we haven't had any formal discussions with Gisborne yet and, and don't worry I intend to if we get that far. Um, I think it's many hands to the pump or many hands make light work and I, I would expect Gisborne to be um, at least open to a discussion about what success looks like as far as funding goes. I'm sure, I'm sure the big businesses in Gisborne won't just sit back and you know hope for the best. I'm sure they will be lobbying their councillors equally as hard about uh, the contribution of uh, more than just um, support, ultimately. So th at, at this stage there's no, absolutely no indication of any financial um, assistance from Gisborne District Council, but we haven't had a formal discussion. And to be fair, we haven't had anything to aim at yet. I mean, we still haven't until we get through this paper and then we've got something to put on the table and discuss. So. And if I may, just, just one, one more question, Mr Chairman. Um, if I can. 